Hi team, today we are working on FIFO perpetual method. Perpetual, so FIFO stands for first in, first out. This is a way of tracking cost of goods sold. So up here we have our data set. We have a beginning balance of three units at a cost of $3. Then we have a couple purchases and a couple of sales. So let's go ahead and jump right in. I have a column here for purchases. I have a column for cost of goods sold and a column for ending inventory. You could actually probably not do this purchases column and still be okay, but you absolutely must have a cost of goods sold and an ending inventory column in order to keep your data straight. If you try to merge these two columns together, bad things happen. So definitely keep a cost of goods sold column and an ending inventory column, but you might be okay without this purchases column. Okay, so starting off, we have on March 5th, the beginning balance of three units at $3. So down here on March 5th, I'm going to fill that into our ending inventory column. So three units at $3. So that gives us a total of $9. I'm going to go ahead and just highlight this to keep um, track or to show more clearly what our separate days are. So right now on March 5th, we just have three units sitting on a shelf, okay? So three units sitting on a shelf. So then on March 10th, up here we have another purchase of 10 units at $6. So here we have 10 units at six dollars and that gives us a total cost of 60. You can see this is just a multiplication formula so it's just 10 units times six dollars to give us a total of 60. So over here now in our ending inventory we still have those original three units at three dollars and now we have 10 units at $6. So it is important to rewrite those so that we can keep straight what we have in total. So we're gonna rewrite those to show that today we have a total of 13 units and a total cost of $69, okay? But we have to write them separately to keep track of our separate inventory layers. Okay. So now on March 13th, we have our first sale and we're going to sell five units. It's really important to know that our physical inventory doesn't have to match our accounting inventory method. So for physical inventory, we might have a physical flow of FIFO, meaning the first inventory in is going to be the first inventory out. So that might be the case if we have a grocery store, right? So the first milk to come in or the first lettuce to come in is what we want to sell first. That's what we want to have the first out, right? So we would rotate our stock and we don't want people messing it up by reaching into the back of the milk cooler, right? So first in, first out. And so then we might also have an accounting flow that's the same first in, first out, but we don't have to. They don't have to match. So accounting flow doesn't have to match your physical flow. In this case, let's say that we do. Let's say that we do have a grocery store and so we have a physical FIFO flow and a costing FIFO flow for accounting purposes. So first in, first out. So on March 13th, when we sell these five units, the first inventory in is going to be the first inventory out. So the first inventory in was these three units. So we're going to sell all three of those. So three at three. But remember, we sold five units total. So we're going to need to sell another two units here. That'll get us up to the total of five. And those other two units came from this layer. So that's going to be at six dollars. So that's a total of five units sold. So now when we look at what we have left, we don't have any of these $3 ones left. So this is going to be zero at three. So those are all completely gone. And then we had 10 units total. We sold two of those. So we would have eight at $6 left here. Technically, you don't need to write if there's zero left. You don't even have to write that down. I am going to do it through this process just because it might be easier for your brain to process, but it's definitely not required. So zero at three left in our ending inventory and then eight at six. 
Okay, and then on March 19th, we have another purchase. So we're going to purchase 12 units at $8. So here on March 19th, we're going to purchase 12 units at $8. So now in our ending inventory, we're going to carry this old inventory down. So I am going to put the zero at three, but again, that's not required. Then we do need to put eight at six. And now we have 12 units at $8. And then I'm just going to highlight this to show that that's one full day. So zero at three, eight at six, and 12 at eight. That's what we have available in our warehouse to sell or our store. And then on March 28th, we have one more sale, one final sale of nine units. So remember that we're doing the FIFO method. So first in is first out. So when we're selling those nine units, the first items in are going to be the first items out. We don't have any units at $3, so we can't sell any of those. But we do have eight at six. So we're going to sell all eight at six. But we need to sell a total of nine. So we're going to need to take one more from that bottom price layer. So we're going to take one at eight. That gets us up to our total nine units sold. Then when we look at what we have left in ending inventory, we're going to have zero at three again. Don't need to write that if you don't want to. Now we've sold all of those $6 ones, so we have zero at six. And then for that 12, those 12 units at $8, we sold one of those, so we would have 11 left at $8. So our ending inventory is really just 11 units at $8. Our final step would be to add up our total cost of goods sold. So we would do a sum function here or add it on your calculator, right? And this would be total cost of goods sold. So we would just add all of our cost of goods sold and make sure you go all the way up here. So add every single sale for the whole period, in this case, the whole month. So total cost of goods sold 77 and then total ending inventory is 11 units at $8 for 88 total. So that's it team for perpetual FIFO first in first out cost of goods sold.